Hey, welcome back to Blooming Beauty with Katie Messer. I'm Katie Messer. Tonight we'll be starting a series on Advent, a uh, four part series where I will be reading a blog that uh, I wrote a few years back um, that just tries to give you firsthand account of what it might have been like uh, to uh, be preparing uh, to receive the Christ child um, if you were in the shoes of Mary. So uh, the scripture references will be in the comment box below. Uh, and if you enjoy the content, uh, I encourage you to subscribe, refer a friend, uh, feel free to post it wherever you'd like. Um, the whole hope of this um, vlog, whatever it's called, is to just speak of Christ. So if you know someone that would be encouraged by hearing um, the Christmas story, perhaps from a uh, personal narrative, um, feel free to share. So here we go. It's called The Season of Advent, Fall on Your Knees, Part One. As the season of Advent has begun, may our hearts turn towards the bustling town of Bethlehem and the sound of cattle and other barnyard animals as a young betrothed woman prepared to give birth in a humble stable to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus, the Christ child. Many of us have heard this story year after year, but never really given pause to the full weight of the significance in each interlude. Ladies, put yourself in Mary's shoes. You love God. You are a virgin. You are betrothed to a man by the name of Joseph, who builds things for a living. You live in the town of Nazareth. There you witness a spectacular sight. An angel of God, Gabriel, appears to you. After being nearly scared out of your skin by seeing a heavenly being, the angel assures you that you don't need to be afraid, but have been found highly favored in God's eyes. Gabriel explained that Mary would become pregnant as a virgin by the Spirit of God. As Mary tried to wrap her head around this, the angel Gabriel shared that this child would be called the Son of the Most High and that his reign would never end. Mary asked, how could this be possible? She was a virgin, remember? The angel assured her that with God, all things are possible. Mary uh, exhibited incredible faith and trust in Almighty God as she accepted this inexplicable feat. Reference Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. The Bible says, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Luke 1, 38. The angel of the Lord also visited Joseph. Try to grasp the love this man had for his betrothed Mary. The period of betrothal is much different than Western cultures. When a couple is betrothed to be married, they have declared that they are committed to waiting for the other until the resources and witnesses are in place to come together in marriage. Thus to have a betrayal with an engagement demanded a drastic punishment. Joseph is left in an awkward place. He is going to marry this woman, yet now he's being told that she is pregnant with the son of Almighty God. How would your fiance react if you were Mary? It's not like you could have just hopped online and asked if any others had experienced this sort of thing before. No, this was a total blow to the male ego. Feelings of betrayal and confusion must have swirled within his mind, not to mention that death was the expectation by stoning for such an act outside of wedlock within the Jewish culture. Reference Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 23 and 24. Although Joseph was betrothed to Mary, he was going to send her away quietly because he loved her and didn't want to see her harmed. Joseph did not want to see her publicly shamed. As he considered the logistics of divorcing Mary, an angel appeared to him in a dream. He was then commanded, not asked, commanded by the angel to take Mary as his wife, even though she was obviously with child. The angel assured Joseph that Mary was indeed carrying God's son and that Joseph was to call the child Jesus to fulfill the prophecy of old that a virgin will give birth to a son and his name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Reference Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. 
Joseph, in great faith and obedience, heeded the command of the angel. Joseph took Mary as his wife, but did not know her until after she would give birth. And he would name this child Jesus in Bethlehem. Reference Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And scripture says, And when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife. But he kept her virgin until she gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. That's Matthew 1 verses 20 through 25. In response to a decree, from the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus, all of the people within the Roman world had been ordered to return to their town, their own towns to be counted. Joseph and very pregnant Mary endured the arduous journey from Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem within Judea. Bethlehem was known as the city of David, reference Luke chapter 2, verse 4. And Joseph was both of the line and house of David. This also fulfilled a prophecy of ancient days regarding the Christ child would to be, was to be born within Bethlehem of the house of David. Reference Isaiah 9.6, Isaiah 11.1, 1, Micah 5.2, Luke 1.33, and Revelation 22.16. Isaiah 16.5 says, In love a throne will be established. In faithfulness a man will sit on it. One from the house of David. One who will one who in judging seeks justice and speeds the cause of righteousness. As Mary and Joseph arrived into Bethlehem, the city bustled with activity from all the many traveling. Bethlehem was terribly overcrowded with visitors and finding lodging was a major issue. The whole Roman world had been moved around in order to carry out this royal census as, as desired by Caesar Augustus and compliance to the decree was not a suggestion. No matter how great the inconvenience may have been to any given individual or family, each and every citizen within the Roman world had to obey this royal decree from Caesar Augustus. The time had come for Mary to give birth to Jesus, but they still didn't, uh, could not find a place for her to labor and deliver, let alone lay down. Every bed and breakfast they had stopped at had given them the same response. Sorry, no vacancy. Finally, one owner of a B&B &B told Joseph that he did not have any vacancy, but that he did have a stable that would provide Mary with some relief while birthing the baby. They took the man up on the offer with sincere gratitude. Mary labored amongst the sights and smells of livestock within a stranger's stable. They welcomed baby Jesus within, within the, into the world and Mary wrapped her newborn son in swaddling cloths. She then laid him in a manger, which is a long open box where barnyard animals eat their food. Reference Luke chapter two, verses six and seven. And the actual verses say, while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Luke 2, verse 6 and 7. At this time, shepherds were protecting their flocks in the darkness of night to make sure that no predator would steal them away. And then, suddenly, the shepherds were filled with great fear. The fields had become instantly illuminated with brilliant light. They saw an angel surrounded by the glory of the Lord and were scared out of their minds. The angel assured them that they did not need to be afraid, but rather needed to rejoice. On that very day, in the city of David, Bethlehem, the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the Christ child, had been born. They were instructed 
that they would find the child wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. At these words, the company of a company of heavenly hosts appeared alongside the angel and began to praise God. Can you even imagine what this must have looked like? The illuminated sky above is suddenly filled with heavenly beings who are praising the Lord for the arrival of Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind. Luke chapter 2 verse 14 says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. After the angel had left, the stunned shepherds looked at one another and agreed that they needed to go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord had done. With great desire to see the Christ child, the shepherds hurried off to find Mary, Joseph, and the baby who would be lying in a manger. Talk about an unsurpassable and supernatural display of celestial jubilee and excitement by the heavenly hosts. The God-man, Jesus Christ, had finally officially entered into his own creation in the form of a babe. Christ the Lord was born. As the shepherds arrived to the stable with dirtied clothing and scruffy appearance from living amongst their sheep in the field, they entered to view the Christ child. And just as the angel had said, baby Jesus was wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. The shepherds marveled at this. They recalled the, mag the magnitude of this child's arrival as stated by the heavenly hosts. With celebration in their hearts, they left the stable telling everyone within crowded Bethlehem what the angel had shared to them regarding this child. Mary, now a mama for the first time, treasured all these things in her heart. God was fulfilling the promises that she too had been assured of by the angel. Reference Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. How faithful is the Lord Almighty. It's the end of part one. Join me for the other three. And remember, bloom where God has you planted. Because there's purpose for each day. And you are worth it. Never let someone tell you otherwise. Because John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world that he sent his only son for you so that whoever believes in him, even me, even you, would not perish and suffer eternal hell, but have eternal life through Jesus Christ. May you call on him today and experience that eternal life. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this time together. We just ask that in this time of hope, that hope was born on Christmas Day, that that, that, that need for redemption and reconciliation with Almighty God was, was birthed and given a name, Jesus, because he would save his people and all who call upon his name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. For any and all who would choose to call on you this night and just say, Lord, I've tried every other way and it doesn't work. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of every screw up and every shame and every embarrassment and every failure that I've done. I give it to you. I believe that you are God and I believe that you raised from the dead on the third day. Father, that you would save them just for the declaration of faith. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for the hope of Christmas. It can be so sad for some. Allow them to find the hope that was birthed that first Christmas night that you had promised clear back in Genesis 3.15 and that you were fulfilling in the form of a babe to live a perfect life that we could not live and die a death that we could not die to redeem all of humanity who would choose to believe it. Thank you for your love. May it be felt by everyone listening for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen.